I love trying to build big orcs, but since the ones from Games Workshop are all really stunted, the only option to build a truly huge orc is to convert one. In this case, I decided to use this Minotaur Demon from Reaper Miniatures as a base. He has a really interesting lean look to him that I thought would make for a good conversion, even if his proportions are really wonky looking here. I started by snipping away his digitigrade legs. The fact orcs don't have them is one of the things that limit big conversions since most big models do. In this case, the middle portion of his legs are so long that they make for perfectly good shins, which isn't always the case. I also started shaving off the portions of his armor that I didn't like or simply thought red as too medieval and wouldn't synergize well with the armor plates I was planning on adding later. The most extensive area that needed shaving is the Minotaur's mane. I could probably have just left it and made it look like a pelt the orc was wearing, but I decided to cut it off anyway to try and get the cleanest look possible. I didn't worry too much about being careful because I knew later on I'd go over and smooth it with Milliput. For my orc's head I tried a few different options but ended up going with this Max Mini Tech Freak one. It has a great angular look to it and matches his lean build. I had him look straight forward because I wanted to give the sense that he was bearing down on you ready to slash and savage and kill. His legs as they were weren't going to work so I chopped off the left one at the knee. My original plan was to glue it on at an angle more plausible for standing and then fill in the gap with green stuff but once it was off I realized I could just replace it with a deaf dread leg. They're roughly the same width and the deaf dread leg honestly works perfectly as a knee, shin, and foot. I wanted to give the impression that the deaf dread portion was fully integrated into the leg so I carved out the middle of the thigh so some of the skin would overlap the edges. With the deaf dread leg glued in place, I realized that my orc now had a kind of mid-stride sprinting look to him. I really liked the sense of dynamic motion and energy it gave him so I decided to lean into it. The right leg, which I had been planning to reposition like the first, I instead left in place and cut off the foot of a deaf dread to fix there. The angle is such that I could have replaced the whole bottom half with the deaf dread leg, but I liked the uneven look of having one leg mechanical and the other biological. With his legs done, I started layering on armor plates to his shoulder. These are the ones to a deaf dread and kill a can, which are the only ones of the correct size I had available. It's hard to tell without something to compare him to, but he's roughly as tall as a deaf dread and by no means a small fellow. Because he's actually so big, I drilled out some of the insides of him so that I could reduce his weight. I was worried a bit about that one spindly leg bearing all his weight, but it was never actually much of a problem. While I liked his left arm, his outstretched right arm kind of bothered me. Even with his original pose, it doesn't really look that naturalistic. To try and fix it, I cut off his hand and shaved off some of the top so I could reposition it to better fit in line with the rest of his arm. While it was off, I also drilled in a hole so I could fit in a wire and connect it to this buzzsaw. It's a Def Dread or Kill a Can one and fits the scale nicely. Instead of plastic card for the pole, I used the plastic portion of a Q-tip. They're cheaper in the right diameter, though really hard to glue for some reason. Even with the angle of the hand changed, I didn't love how it looked. It was just a little too straight for my tastes. So I cut off the arm and decided to replace it with this Bloodthirster one that was already bent the way I thought it would look good. While the angle was much better, the arm is too muscled compared to the rest of the model and looks really kind of out of place. At this point, I decided to fully embrace the cyborg element of my orc and just swap out his right arm for the burner one from Achillacan. Not only is the angle better than the original, I think it helps give him character and sell the idea of his mad dash forward, almost like he's so reckless he's constantly losing limbs but doesn't care and just keeps bolting new ones in place, or replacing those that are too slow to keep up with him. Instead of trying to make the buzz saw axe work, I decided to use a power claw instead. This is by far my favorite of them and only adds to his deranged look. For the arm to fit right, I lengthened it with this bit from a Killican leg. I glued the lengthened arm in place and then molded green stuff around it, though I later went in and thickened the arm's bicep by sandwiching more Killican shins around it. For the left hand, I liked the grasping pose it's in, but also felt like it could be improved. This is the double-barreled shooter from an orc warbike. With a little slicing off of his gauntlet, it fits flush against his forearm. Before gluing it in place, I decided to add a skirt to my orc of green stuff. It wasn't great, but mostly got covered up by armor plates so it didn't matter. I also glued the shooter in place and bent a wire to make a kind of handle for it to match up to his hand, so it looks like his fingers are flexing around it. To cement the shooter in place, I glued in a bracket so it connects to the original model's armband, and I also added a piston in the back that makes it look like it's hanging from his pauldrons. And with that in place, my cyborg was ready for battle. I'd originally planned on adding more armor plates, but this I think is a good middle ground. Any more would distract from the mad dash quality he has. You can just imagine him bearing down on some poor imperial guardsman with deranged and vicious glee, ready to slice him in two with his power claw, the body parts of him that couldn't keep up replaced with metal limbs that could. Though I originally got the model on a whim and wasn't sure I could make anything good out of him, I'm really pleased with how he turned out and how dynamic his pose is. But what do you all think? 
Love him, hate him, let me know in the comments. And if you liked this video, subscribe or check out some of my other orc conversions. Thanks for watching.